hello, and as always, welcome to Art in Motion. I'm sure lately you've seen a lot of these 3D images popping up on your Facebook timeline, and have been wondering how the heck are they made, and you've been wanting to apply them to your artworks so they can really catch people's eye when they're scrolling through their timeline and suddenly something's moving and they can interact with it. I've got to admit, as much as it's a gimmick, it's pretty darn cool. So I'm going to show you how to create these 3D Facebook images using Blender. So the way that these Facebook 3D images work is they use a depth map. So this will be the image that I upload, but this is what the depth map will look like more or less. And the way that it works is whatever's white is closest to you and whatever's black is furthest away from you. And it uses that information to simulate 3D depth. So just to illustrate, the darker parts to the lighter parts is pretty much how it works. Whatever is closest to you will be white, whatever is furthest away from you will be black. A lot of people have been taking their photos and their drawings and manually painting this information to create this 3D effect. But we're going to use Blender to generate that information for us. And I'm going to show you three different ways to do this. So let's dive right in, shall we? As you can see in this scene, we've got a skull, some 3D text, some spheres and a background plane. We also have some lights and a camera. If we press zero on our numpad to look through the camera, and then change over to the rendered view. This is the image that we're going to be rendering. And we're using the EV render engine. Everything that I'm going to show you can also be done in the cycles render engine. But just for the sake of speed and convenience, we're going to use EV. So if we go to the top of the screen here where it says render, and then we click on render image, we'll get our rendered image, which we'll put one side and then go over to the compositing tab. We just must make sure that backdrop, auto render and use nodes is turned on and we should be presented with something that looks like this. The next thing we're going to do is click on add, go to output, viewer and then we can plug this in over here. What I like to do is go to add, layout, reroute and plug this in over here. What this does is it breaks one of these curves so you can now just take it from there and plug it in. So now we've got one line that leads to two output nodes. Now, as you can see in the background, we've got the image that we're going to be rendering. In order to generate the depth map, all we've got to do is take this depth output and plug it in. But if it's not there for whatever reason, just make sure that you go to the view layers tab over here and turn on Z. You can then plug it in and you'll see it comes out completely white. And the reason being is we need to convert it to something that we can actually see. So we'll go to add or we'll press shift A, go to vector, normalize and plug it in over here. Now that gives us a black and white depth map, but I'm sure you can already see the first problem. The colors are inverted. So what we're going to do is press shift A, go to converter, click on color ramp and we'll just switch these two points around. So now we have the colors inverted. Another problem we have is the edges are very jagged. So what we can do to try and fix that is press shift A, go to filter, go to blur, and we'll just blur it by five and five. And now that edge is less harsh, but this is about as good as it's going to get. This is why I like to use a completely different technique. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to our render passes. We'll activate the mist render pass. We'll then make sure that our camera is selected, go down to our camera settings, scroll down until we get to our viewport display settings and click on mist. If you look over here, we suddenly get this new widget. In order to adjust this widget, we have to go to our world settings and then we can adjust where our mist begins and how deep our mist is. What I like to do is I like to place the start just in front of whatever our closest object to the camera is. And then I place the depth just behind whatever object is furthest away. We'll then go into our compositor. We'll take our mist pass and plug it into our output nodes. And as you can see, it comes out black, but that's because we just need to re-render our image. We can go over here and render our image or press F12 on our keyboard. And there we have it. As you can see, let's just delete these two uh, nodes. 
we've got the same problem that we had before where the colors are inverted so we'll just take our color ramp and plug it in now what we can do is we can adjust these points on our color ramp to get more or less contrast between different objects we can also add in different points here so we can get different kinds of contrast in the image and then once we've got something that we think might work for us and then inside of our compositing tab we can go down to the bottom over here which is our image viewer click on this icon and change it to render result and now we can see what our compositor is doing so what we'll do is we'll just go here and change it to the render layer so we can see what our image is coming out as. We'll then click on image, save as, and we'll name it skull. You can name it whatever you want, but this one I'm gonna name skull and I'm saving it to my desktop. We'll then change over from our render layer to our composite so we can save out our depth map. We'll then say save as, and this is very important. Whatever you named your image, you must give it the same name, but just add underscore depth and then save. Now that you've got your image and your depth map, all you gotta do is go to where it says create new post, add photo or video, upload photo or video. You select your image with your depth map and click open. It'll take a few moments to upload the two photos and then you'll be taken to a screen that looks like this that takes a few moments to load while it generates your image. And now you can move your mouse around to see what it does. As you can see, there's a little bit of tearing in the image, but that's because there's probably just too much contrast. So what we can do is just go to the darkest part of the image and just adjust the colors. Probably take this one as well. Give it a little bit less contrast. can add in more points to play around with what parts go where. And once you've got something that you feel you're happy with that might work, you can experiment with this and see what happens. You just click image, save as, and you overwrite the old depth map. And you just try load the image again with the new depth map. Okay, that one seems to have less tearing. Uh, it's still not perfect, but you can play around with this until you get something that you like. To prevent the tearing is very difficult, but I'm gonna show you another technique that might work a little bit better for you. Moving on to technique number three. This technique uses view layers. And as you can see in the outliner over here, all the different objects are sorted into collections. So we've got a collection for our background, the balls, the text, and the skull, as well as the camera and the lights. We'll use these collections in order to build our different view layers, or as you might know them in other software, as render layers. The render layers are displayed at the top over here. And what you want to do with this very first one, we'll name it All. We'll then click on the icon next to it to create a new view layer, and we'll name this one Skull. And what we want to do is we want to select all, and what we want to do is we want to select all of the collections except for the skull and the lights and camera. We then right click, go down to the view layer settings and we can set them as exclude. We can also press E on our keyboard. So it'll exclude everything except for the lights and the skull. So we'll do that with each and every single one of these where we'll separate the text, the balls and the background. So now that we have all of our view layers set up, we can then press F12 on our keyboard to render so we can render all these different view layers. So once they're rendered, we can then head into the compositor. Once we're inside of the compositor, we'll just take the alpha and plug it in over here so we get a plain white screen because it's solid white. We'll then press Shift A, go to color, mix, and plug it in over here. We'll then select the render layer, press Shift D to duplicate it, plug in the alpha at the bottom, 
We'll then change it over to the balls layer, and then we can adjust how much of it shows through onto the background. We can then press Shift A again, add another color mix node, and then we can duplicate this render layer again, plug this one into the bottom, change it to the skull, and we can do the same. We can then duplicate the mix shader, plug it in over there, duplicate the render layer, and plug it in over here, and change this one to the text. So you can adjust any one of these how you wish in order to get the look that you're going for. You can also, you can also switch different layers around in order to push some of them to the front or to the back. But yeah, this way you get quite a lot of control, very clean lines, and it still works. So that's all the different techniques to generate these depth maps for Facebook. If you like my video, please subscribe and consider donating to my Patreon or sending me a little bit of Bitcoin or Ethereum. I really appreciate it and every little bit helps. I also now have a merch store, so check that out in the description. If you have any requests, I'll add to the merch store. I'm actually going to be uh, commissioning artists that I know in order to create some more merchandise, so you will also be helping them. So yeah, thank you so much and keep creating. If you have a portfolio or a showreel that you want to share, please join my Discord and share it there. I really want to see what you guys create.